Good evening, guys. Welcome back to my channel. So I'm actually just preparing for a night shift and I wanted to sit here and take a few minutes and just like touch base a little bit. This is not going to be a really exciting video, but if you guys are interested at all in hearing what it's like to be a recovering perfumaholic or like my thoughts a few months down the road after finally making the decision to super declutter my collection and go down to a very minimal amount of perfume. If this is not your cup of tea, do feel free to click out. I'm sorry, it's not going to be like a super exciting video. There's not going to be a lot of exciting things to look at. It's just going to be me basically talking about what it's like to be a recovering perfumaholic. <laughs> so first of all, if you're new here, just a quick Coles Notes version of how I became a perfumaholic and how I, why I decided to not be a perfume person anymore. I essentially started my YouTube channel back in 2000, I think it was 19, and my channel started out as basically kind of what it is now, like simplified home living and um, semi-minimalist stuff and decluttering, keeping your place organized and just things I love, like whatever brought me happiness, things I liked, you know, fashion and handbags and home decor and candles and just like you know normal stuff skincare just whatever I liked that's kind of what I just felt like being creative and I made a channel and at some point I discovered that I really was into perfumes um then the lockdown hit everything was closed and I started blind purchasing perfumes and it became kind of like a hobby and little did I know but there was this whole perfume niche out there there was this whole perfume world that I didn't even know existed until I started making perfume videos and I started doing little perfume hauls and I did a couple collection videos and I ended up doing some perfume declutters and those videos did really well and my channel started to grow pretty quickly at that point and all of a sudden my channel was no longer about really anything else. It was mostly perfume and I did have at the time a lot of people writing me and saying, you know, I really miss your minimalist content. I really miss your other content. You're like calming, relaxing videos, the clean with me's and that kind of stuff. And they were like, I hope you don't get too far into the perfume thing. I would really like if you would just stick to your, like, you know, what you did before. And I was kind of torn. I didn't really know what to do. Cause I was like, well, I'm really enjoying this at the time. And you know, it was something I was really having fun with. And I was just discovering all these perfumes. There's so many different types of perfumes out there. And I found websites like fragrance net and fragrance buy that were so cheap. And it just became like a really fun hobby, especially during the lockdown when I think all of us were struggling with mental health and with other things. Um, you know, a lot of us were not able to go out and do things anymore. You couldn't travel. Everything was shut down. You couldn't go visit friends and family. You couldn't go to restaurants. I mean, what else was there to do besides start indulging in something else in your home? And for me, and I think a lot of other people as well, it became online shopping. So very quickly, I went from having one perfume at the time to all of a sudden I had tens of perfumes. And at some at one point I had hundreds of perfumes kind of coming through my door, whether they were ones I'd purchased myself or they were from other companies. I just kind of ended up going with it. I found that I really enjoyed perfumes. I really enjoyed talking about them. I found that I was pretty good at describing the way that they smelled. Um, and it just, it just seemed to fit. It seemed to fit. And before I knew it, I was coined a perfume reviewer. Even though A, I have absolutely no training in the world of perfumery, B, I really don't know what I'm talking about, and C, I'm just a person who likes fragrance. But somehow I got coined as a perfume reviewer. And at one point I was like, okay, well maybe that's what I am now. Maybe the simple chic life is all about perfume now. Maybe. <laughs> so anyway, fast forward, and after a couple of years of doing the perfume thing, it started to feel very toxic for me. There was little things in my in my day-to-day -day life and in my gut and just in my in my world that did not feel in alignment with me when it came to perfume. The biggest thing probably is that I am such a minimalist. I hate to say the word minimalist because I'm not somebody who lives out of a backpack, but I am I'm a very minimal person at heart. I don't like clutter. I don't having I don't like having a lot of stuff in my house. I don't like having unnecessary things sitting around that I'm not using. I don't like collections. I don't think that it's there's any point in hoarding, collecting, storing things away. Like for me, that is not something I am really into. I am into using and loving what you have, be it two items or be it 10 items of that same thing. As long as you use them and love them, that's fine. For me though, it just never seemed to fit to have 100 perfumes, 75 perfumes, 50 perfumes. It just seemed very, very excessive because it was not something I was actually going to be able to tangibly realistically use and put to use and perfumes do have a shelf life not only that but every time I would look at 
my perfumes. On one hand, I loved them and thought they were so beautiful and I liked going through and smelling all of them and it was just a really nice, enjoyable experience. On the other hand, I felt very overwhelmed and kind of annoyed every time I would look at them. And there was this part of me constantly that always wanted to declutter, always wanted to get rid of and just hone in on my top five, seven, or 10-ish perfumes, which from the very beginning of the whole perfume journey was what I told people, like my dream is to only have about 10 perfumes. And at the time it seemed unattainable. Like it seemed like there's no way I would ever get to that. It was like a pipe dream. It was a fantasy. It was like, yeah, well, I'd love to just have 10, but can I do that? Is that something I can realistically do or that I, I will ever conquer this demon of shopping? I will ever conquer this impulsive need to continue to try new perfumes and buy new perfumes. I was spending so much money every month on perfumes, you guys. I was justifying my purchases. I was telling myself a whole bunch of justifications that it's okay if I spend $500 on a perfume I don't need because I have a YouTube channel and I'm a perfume reviewer. Therefore, it's okay if I go out and spend hundreds of dollars on perfumes I don't need. And on some level, I knew it was not right, but I still kept telling myself that lie anyways. Um, so I would justify my purchases and also I would justify my declutter. In the beginning, it made sense to declutter because otherwise you would just keep accumulating. But you guys, at some point it became this question of, okay, if I'm going to just keep decluttering, why am I keeping on purchasing? That does not make sense. It's one thing to declutter and to keep on top of things and go through and simplify things and um, you know do a periodic kind of mini declutter just to make sure things aren't getting out of control the way you do with the rest of your house. You periodically declutter, you know, cutlery, you periodically might declutter shampoo bottles or something like that. Th things that just accumulate normally. That's normal. It's not normal or okay, in my opinion, to constantly be decluttering just for the sake of constantly purchasing over and over and over like a cycle, bringing more in, letting go of something else just because you felt the urge to buy something new or you wanted to buy something new. It was feeling to me kind of stupid <laughs> for lack of a better way to put it. I was starting to feel kind of silly. I was feeling sheepish. I was starting to be annoyed that I had to explain to people my purchases. Like, you know, people would say, oh, I can't believe you let go of that one. And I would say, well, I had to because, you know, otherwise I would have too many perfumes and I bought these other new perfumes. And it just became like, what are you even doing? Like, what was I even doing? And yeah, there was a lot more that went into it. The type of sponsorships and stuff like that and the and working with companies and the requirements that the companies would have and having to review perfumes I didn't really like, but I had no choice because I was working with that company. But that was part of the deal was if I was working with them, I had to share certain perfumes on my channel, even though I myself would never have gone out and bought that perfume. It just showed up in my house because that was the deal. Um, and then it started playing with my ethics. It started playing with my mind and I was no longer being true to myself. I was no longer living my life with intention based on what made me happy or what I wanted, I was starting to do things because I had a YouTube channel. I was starting to review perfumes because I was working with companies. Whereas that's not why I started my channel. I started my channel to share what jived with me, what made me happy, what what was in me to give to other people. Not so I could follow a company's agenda. That was not why I started my channel. And I was not okay with getting perfume sent to me every single month, many of which I would never have purchased myself. I would never have been promoting this perfume. It just was not fitting. Like to put it simply, it was not in alignment with me, with what I wanted. And everything just started feeling off about it. Everything just started feeling very, very off. I was so tired of the comments when I would do updated perfume collection videos, or if I would do, God forbid, a declutter. The declutters became the most toxic for me because as I think a lot of other perfume channels are familiar with, and I've talked to a few of them who've been through the same thing, there's always somebody out there who's going to be super offended that you decided to let go of something. There's always going to be somebody out there giving you a hard time for your choices, even though it doesn't affect them directly. Like I had so much anxiety, you guys. I would wake up every morning with anxiety about, you know, what did people think about the fact that I decluttered some perfume or what did they think about the fact that I brought it back because I missed it and wanted to try it again. So it was that compounded with the fact that none of this really was feeling right with me or jiving with me, and I didn't really know what I was doing. <laughs> anyway, so there was so many things that went into it, and eventually I made the decision, and it just became, I mean, eventually with things in your life, if something doesn't feel right, 
you will eventually come to a point where you just have to make a change. It's no longer a choice. It's like, if you don't make this change, you're going to go crazy. And for me, that's kind of what happened with perfume. I reached a point, you guys, where I was like ready to delete my channel. I was ready to kibosh everything. I was ready. I was just like done. I was over it. And I had to really take a couple weeks and just step back and just literally spend a couple weeks in solitude with myself and be like, okay, hey, forget about YouTube. Forget about brand deals, forget about sponsorships, forget about your contracts with companies. What does Alithia want? Which perfumes do I really want? If I was to actually do what feels right for me, how many would I keep? You know, and I kind of just had to take that time. I had to take a step back from YouTube and like social media in general. And I just had to do my own thing. And I had to stop reading comments as well, because even when I did that perfume declutter video, that final one where I shared, I don't even think it was a declutter. I think it was just my updated collection where I finally revealed my top 10 or so that were left. You guys, the comments were harsh. Some people, I mean, most people are respectful. Don't get me wrong. I have a lot of wonderful, respectful, beautiful people who are normal humans with compassion and understanding and also etiquette. So not only are they understanding and compassionate, but they also won't just say whatever rude things on their mind. I have a really supportive, wonderful audience. and I'm so grateful for that. And if you guys know who you are, then you know, and thank you. But there's a couple trolls who, A, for one thing, choose to follow creators they don't even like, and they don't like what they do, but they follow them just for juice and drama and tea so that they can leave rude comments. I'll never understand these people, these people who have nothing better to do in their lives. And if you know who you are, you also know who you are, (laughs) who just watch, even though A, they don't really like me, B, they don't like what I'm doing and C, they just feel like leaving a rude comment because that is the only thing that gives them a kick in life. But yeah, on that video, there was a couple of harsh, harsh comments, harsh, like uncalled for, not even, not even constructive criticism. Like I can understand a little constructive criticism, But it takes it a step further when you start using cuss, like swear word language to talk to somebody, call them names, and then proceed to cut them down as a human being and tell them why you dislike them and why you think they're going to fail. I myself will never understand those kind of people because I watch certain videos on YouTube where I think to myself all kinds of things. I might think, oh man, I don't like this girl's style or I don't like how she's dressing or I don't like how she's coming across or you know, she annoys me or something, you know, but I would never say that to a person, disrespectfully say something to a person's face, even if it's over a keyboard. If I have nothing nice to say, I will walk away. I don't know. Maybe I was raised in a different generation where you just, you don't treat people with disrespect and say hateful, rude things to them anyway. And one person on that video, I'll never forget that comment really stuck with me. And for some reason, And she said something to the effect of, well, she's going to have to start collecting again, because if she doesn't talk about perfume, she's not going to have a channel. And she said, I was crazy. And she said, man, my boyfriend must really go crazy. He must just hate me. Everything, you know, I'm such a crazy OCD person and just like really rude, hateful stuff. And I remember that comment. I I don't even know why I even bothered looking at the comments of that video, but that was the point when I was like, okay, I'm done. And I was like, I have to be true to me. I have to focus on that this makes me feel really good. And I don't care, you know, if other people don't get it. I don't care if other people are not here for it. I have to do what's right for me. And I know that if I stick to what is right for me, my path will be the right path. I will be in alignment with what's right for me and I will attract the right people and I will attract the right audience. And if it means something to me, it's going to be meaningful for somebody else. Forget about the naysayers, the 1% hateful people in the world. If it's right for me, it's going to be right for someone else too. And that's all I have to focus on. I am not out here being malicious. You know, I'm not out here trying to impact someone's life or hurt someone's life. So I just really had to do what was right for me, even though I knew companies would probably not be real happy with me. Certain viewers probably would be judgmental and hateful and doubt me and tell me that they didn't think I could do it and (laughs) all kinds of things like that. After that video, you guys, I kind of, that was like the last like perfume focused video I did. I I think I did review the new Kali perfumes that came out because they were sent to me and actually they were beautiful and I like Kali perfumes. So because I decided that I didn't want to do the whole constant collecting reviewing thing anymore, didn't mean that if I was sent a beautiful fragrance that I thought was actually very nice that I wouldn't share it with you guys. Um, I have no problem. Like I'm not saying I'm not going to buy perfumes ever. I'm not saying I'm not going to try new perfumes ever. I'm not saying that, you know, I'm don't love them anymore. I still do. Absolutely. It's just, it just became about being smarter with my purchases and 
creating content that was more in alignment with myself, not just constant reviewing perfume for the sake of reviewing because they were sent to me. That was something that didn't align with me anymore, but it doesn't mean I don't love fragrance. I absolutely do. I just, I only have 10 of them now and I'm happy about that, you know, but it doesn't mean that I may not discover a beautiful one in the future and be super excited and definitely want to share it with you guys and, you know, share with you that I brought it to my collection. So after that video, I kind of focused on other content, um, just like other things, you know, just the stuff that was really aligning with me. I kind of went back to my old minimalist ish roots and, um, ironically my channel started growing faster after I quit the perfume thing than when I was reviewing fragrances. My channel took a different direction. It took a turn and I gained more subscribers in one month than I think I gained in the entire last, like, I don't know, six months or something or eight months. I don't know. But ironically, when you get into alignment with what is right for you, when you start focusing on something that truly inspires you and makes you feel good and you actually get into flow state and you get into alignment, things start to change. So that's something that I've noticed that has happened. I feel so much better. I feel so much more at peace. I'm no longer stressed out. I'm no longer anxious. I'm no longer feeling pressured. Like I have these perfumes sitting here. I've got this stuff sitting here in PR. I have to make a video about it because the due date is coming and the company's counting on me. And they write you, they write you emails all the time. Like, Hey, just checking in to see how you're coming on that video. It's like, dude, I don't work for you. I mean, maybe I do because I took that contract, but (laughs) I don't want to work for other companies. I don't want to work as a pawn to advertise perfumes for companies. That is not my purpose. My purpose was to share what I loved you know, and it just was beginning, it it was becoming so frustrating to the point that I would count down the months. I was counting down the months every year to like, when was my contract up? When was it up? When was it up? Going forward, by the way, I'm never going to take a year long contract with a company. That is one of the worst things I think you can do because you cannot say that in five months, you're going to feel the same way about working with a company that you do now. Things can change. So going forward, I will only ever do a video by video basis with a company. That is one lesson I've learned as a content creator. Don't lock yourself in for anything because then you are not in control and you can't choose what you do. And it is the most stressful, annoying, frustrating thing when you already have normal everyday life things going on. Your kids, your real quote unquote real job. Plus on top of it, you've got pressures from companies who sometimes they're not even paying you. They're just sending you stuff, but it's with the agreement, with the understanding that you're going to then do a video about their stuff. And it's just like, that is a, that is the type of pressure I do not need in my life. We are not about that. Like I'm about just living a normal, simple life. I'm a normal, simple girl, you know, who likes fashion. I like a clean home. I like keeping things organized. I like beautiful decor. I like skincare. That's what I'm about. (laughs) Anyway, I'm rambling again. So how have things been since I made that decision to finally just go down to 10 perfumes and like start the process of saying goodbye to being part of the perfume world and not being considered a perfume reviewer. Honestly, it's, I've had ups and downs. Um, I haven't had any regrets at all. I'm so happy with the choices I've made, but I have noticed those old habits, those old shopping habits of perfumes, like at times they have crept in. For one thing, um, one day I saw a reel pop up on my Instagram and she was talking about one of her favorite new perfumes. And it was actually, for those who are interested, it was uh, Iris Absolute from Victoria Minia, I believe. And it just sounded beautiful. I looked up the notes and before I knew it, you guys, I had a sample of that perfume in a shopping cart from Lucky Scent and I wanted to try it. But you guys, I stopped myself. Like my shopping habits and my ability to stop impulsive shopping is getting so good because I actually stopped myself and I was like, no, 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 wait, just wait. Like, whereas six months ago, I wouldn't have thought twice. Not only would I have ordered that sample, I probably would have ordered a full bottle blindly just because I liked the thrill and I wanted to blind buy this $250 bottle of perfume because I was so sure I would like it. And also because I would have justified that purchase because I had a perfume channel. This time I stopped myself pretty quickly and I was like, wait, 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 (laughs) this is going to cost $20 for a one mil sample of perfume that the chances I'm going to like it is pretty slim. What are the chances you're going to be in love with this fragrance? Do you really want to spend $20, $25 to get this sample? Like could my $20, $25 go towards something better? And I ultimately was like, yes, yes, it could. So I'm getting stronger. I'm getting better. Um, a couple months ago, I think I shared with you guys, I did order three, not one, 
but three full-sized Chanel fragrances. What was I thinking? But that is how strong it can be, the shopping addiction. Um, I don't even know if I should call it shopping addiction, but any of you who have struggled to change your purchases, um, you know, maybe you wanted to stop buying so much makeup, maybe you wanted to stop online shopping for shoes or something. For me, it was perfume. And that is how strong and how ingrained that neuroplastic habit is of perfume shopping is I ordered three full bottles of Chanel. Who in their right mind does that? Nobody, nobody in their right mind orders three full bottles of Chanel. That is ridiculous. Nobody needs three full bottles. You don't even, and, and at the time I had my 13 bottles, my 10 to 13 still. And for some reason in my head, I was thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to get Coco Noir. I'm going to get Coco Mademoiselle. And I'm also going to get, what was the other one I ordered? Oh, number five low. Unfortunately, the order went through and it shipped and everything. By the time I got it home, I had come to my senses and I just returned them. I just returned them unopened. I was like, no, this is wrong. Why did I do this? No, <laughs> no. Um, so I sent them back. And those were the only two times that I have either come close to buying a full bottle or slipped back into old habits since I kind of changed directions. And honestly, like these days, I don't feel a pull. I don't feel um, an urge. Sometimes I do get, you know, I do think how lovely it would be to find a new perfume or I see somebody talking about a fragrance and it kind of does inspire me to want to go shopping again. And I don't want to treat perfume as if it's this toxic thing. I don't want it to be forever something that has negative connotations for me because right now when I think about perfumes um when I think about shopping when I think about decluttering when I think about reviewing it it doesn't feel good in my gut I have this uh this feeling in my gut like this is not right it doesn't feel good to me and you have to pay close attention to how things make you feel and yeah the the notion of going and buying a full bottle of perfume at the moment doesn't feel particularly good to me still. I'm still not there yet. Um, I was talking to a friend on Instagram and like I told her, um, you know, I am making dents in my bottles for the first time in three years, you guys, I am putting dents in my bottles. Um, Kaoli Vanilla 28 is getting some serious usage. Like that bottle is like three quarters gone now. What else? Mon Guerlain I've been wearing more. Like I've been wearing a lot of my perfumes. I've even been wearing Armani Code Satin, which I've always thought was a date night perfume. I've been wearing that thing every day. Like life is too short, you guys. You gotta wear the things you love, right? Um, you, you can't save things for special occasions. You have to wear the things you love. And that was one thing I found I did when I was collecting perfumes is I wouldn't wear my best perfumes. I would save my best perfumes for what I considered a special occasion. Well, life is not made up of tons of special occasions. Life is made up of little things every single day. Life is made up of normal life. You need to be using the things you love that make you happy every single day. The perfumes are getting used. And so I was telling my friend, like, if I do find that my bottles are getting low or I'm getting pretty low on a perfume, I know I'm going to be done it in like a couple months, then I could feel justified in getting a new perfume. Or after a few months of not purchasing and say my boyfriend and I go shopping or something, we go on vacation. If I go into Louis Vuitton and I smell a Louis Vuitton fragrance and it's a new release or something and it's beautiful and I really truly fall in love with it and my other bottles are getting low, I don't think there's a problem with getting a perfume at that point. So I'm kind of just there. I'm kind of actually being normal and realistic when it comes to fragrance, the way a normal person would be. Um, have I been tempted to buy other perfumes? Yes. I have been tempted to look at Byredo. I've been tempted with that Victoria Minia perfume. I've even been tempted to revisit Baccarat Rouge for some reason. I don't know why. I'm still feeling really good about things. And yeah, like I say, I'm, I'm in such a better headspace than I was then. And it's, you know, it's so funny because I just did a huge sale on my Instagram. I had these perfumes that I've been trying to sell for like a few months and I've talked about, like, people knew a long time ago. Like, I haven't even talked about these perfumes. They were decluttered a long time ago. But after I posted this sale, um, and I told everybody on Instagram, like, hey, these perfumes got to go. And some of them are worth hundreds of dollars. And I sold them for, like, $35. I'm not kidding with you. Because I just wanted them gone. I wanted them to go to a good home. So after I did this huge, de this huge markdown... I had a few people write me and be like, oh my gosh, I'm so surprised you're letting that one go. And I was like, really? I was like, you must not have seen any of my new content because I haven't, I haven't even talked about perfumes in like months. Like I'm, I'm not even there anymore. And those comments of, um, not that the people mean any harm by it. I know that they don't. Um, but when people say things like, oh my gosh, I'm shocked that you're getting rid of that. I'm like, I'm so confused kind of, because I'm like, 
how are you shocked? Like I, I decluttered down to 10 a while ago. The reason I know I'm on the right path, one of the ways I know I'm on the right path now is because when those comments creep in or when I see somebody say something like, oh, how come you're letting go of that? I thought you loved it. <laughs> it brings back memories and feelings for me, you guys. It brings back this feeling that is so icky to me. It is so icky to me. And it just makes me feel like this is why I stopped because the constant purchasing, reviewing, decluttering, being sent, reviewing, continuing to purchase, continuing to declutter, to make room, having to justify my purchases. It just took me back. It took me back to a place I'm so glad I'm not anymore. So yeah. Anyways, I just was compelled to sit down and make this video for you guys and talk to you about like my experiences um, becoming a quote unquote recovering perfume addict. Like nobody could have told me. If you would have told me a year ago that today I would no longer be reviewing perfumes, buying perfumes, I would have thought you were crazy. I would have been like, no, there's no way. Like this is what I do now. But it just goes to show how much things can change. And yeah, I don't know. I don't really watch perfume content these days. I don't subscribe to a lot of perfume channels anymore because I simply don't want to be influencing myself. I'm very easily influenced. And when I talk to people about what they're purchasing or I see their hauls, it does influence me to want to go out and try perfumes. And I have to remind myself, like, were it not for seeing those videos, I would never have even thought about going perfume shopping. So I have, I have to constantly be telling myself, like, no, you're on a different path. This is not what we do anymore. Those are just a few thoughts today I just wanted to share with you. We spend money on things we don't need all the time. And honestly, all it does at the end of the day is bring us stress and create things sitting around that we're not using that we then have to store, maintain, and ultimately probably declutter because we're not going to use them. I've been seeing a lot of this kind of content come out recently. People are kind of waking up to the idea that like, Okay, just because a huge makeup channel is talking about the newest eyeshadow palette does not mean you have to go out and get that eyeshadow palette. You are fine with your one eyeshadow palette. Like you will be okay. Anyways, you guys, those are my thoughts for today. I do have to go. I do have to get ready for a night shift and I hope everybody has a wonderful day and I'll see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.